taking some of my oh shit wow look at that water i'd like to raise the sails again watching for the whales again and never have to say i wish that i had done the things that i can't do when i'm too old to play have a great time down here in the islands you know i will when we last left you, Jeff was just leaving and I was itching to get out of Marsh Harbor. Mm -mm. Just another day in paradise. Patches of turtle grass, 20 feet of water. Amazing. The first destination was Manowar Key, just four nautical miles away. I started at the very eastern end and worked west over the next several days. We've got an anchor spot here, but it's pretty close to this, these rocks, so. I think we should dive the anchor and make sure we are where we think we are and that we're staying there. And this is why you go and look. It's also why you try to find pure sand if you can. Shells of short spine sea urchins and long spine. There's no amazing reef here, but it's still heaven for me. When I was a kid, I always had aquariums and I would put my face right on the glass and imagine I was inside like a diver. This is so much like that. I even have the glass in front of my face. So we are going to head into the harbor and anchor or take a mooring because it's supposed to blow a bit hard tonight. Otherwise they'd rather be out here someplace. We'll go in and stay left toward town. And the entrance is just right here. Guess I better drop the jib. It seemed a little too narrow to play around with sailing in, much as I would have loved that. Not a big entrance. Public dock, very nice. After anchoring for two nights, I later learned that anchoring is no longer allowed. The chariot is tied up to the stairs. Manowar apparently is famous for its uh, boat building. I bet it's all fiberglass, but they look real nice. More finished ones here. Yeah, they look real nice. Considered the boat building capital of the Bahamas. I'll paraphrase it for you. Boat building on Men and War dates back to the 1800s when numerous yards lined the harbor. William H. Aubrey, Uncle Will, built some of the largest and when a big one was going up, he would hire as many as 15 to 20 men, many of whom had their own small yards and were building smaller boats, the Abaco dinghies, which became the backbone of the fishing and commercial industry of the Bahamas. Men and Key established a reputation as a prime boat building center. 
other notable detail about Man of War Key is that it is a dry island, so BYOB. Golf carts are the primary vehicles, good for getting around and socializing. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a hard time seeing a road like this going down that ends at the water and not wanting to go down to the end of that road. Glad we're not coming in today to that cut. This Aubrey Brothers shop is for sale if you're interested. Just needs a little work. I pushed on to the western end of Man of War to the place Jeff and I first anchored when we came in. Wow, there's actually breakers wrapping around the corner. Out there and around this way is Man of War Cut. And the waves are coming in that way. But the wrapping around and starting to break in here, amazing. Look at this guy. Huh. Well, between the swells and my new neighbors who think yahooing as they use dinghy around is fun, I'm out of here. It was late, so I just went a half a mile back east to escape the swell. So one of my spreader hooks has come down. Um, it holds the halyards off the mast so they don't tap. So I'm going to go up the mast and put this back on. You can see where it was where that piece of tape is hanging there. Need more hands up here. Ha! Ah, I have it on the wrong side. All right, I'm going back up the mast, but I'm not going to be able to talk very much because I'm going to have this in my mouth. It's epoxy and the reflective square that's missing on the Windex up there. Right now I'm taking that reflective square and looping it over the bend in the wire. Taking some of my... Oh, shit! <laughs> the wind blew it right off, and it fluttered down about 40 feet behind the boat. Fortunately, it had the good sense to land red side up. And why not check the anchor while I'm here and poke around a little bit? Look how fast he zippers up the cover, protecting all those little sucker feet. Alright, back to work. Reflect the square, take two. This time, I'm putting some glue in here. Okay. Alright, I think my work here is done. Because when you look up from the cockpit, you now see two squares. If the tail is between the two squares like it is now, that's where you can't go. You're sailing into the wind. Once the tail of the arrow gets even with the squares or outside it, 
you can sail that. Anywhere but between those two squares. Still see the starfish right in the shadow of the mast. You know what's weird? I love doing this in the water. If the boat's on the hard, I hate it. Absolutely hate it. There it is, another feather restored. And as a reward, I'm sailing to Fishhawk Key, just west of Manowar Key. Manowar Cut is looking a little frothy today. Wow, look at that water. Still can't get over it. I remember the first time I was headed to the tropics, St. Thomas, and I saw the pictures, I thought they were fake. I thought they were utterly fake. And when I got there and saw that it wasn't fake, it was really a wow moment. Like, that's real? Holy smokes, that's incredible. And it's still incredible. I still love it. When I dove the anchor, it was happily dragging along the bottom, even in pure sand, which really kind of disappointed me. Bye, Fishhawk Key. We're headed back to Marsh Harbor. Somewhere under the sun over that way. If I go right on heading with dead downwind and the jib collapses like that. So I'm gonna tack downwind. Well, I don't really like that we're going to Marsh Harbor. But other than that, it's a pretty nice sail we're having here. I've just got the jib only for two reasons. One, I didn't feel like doing all the work to put the main up, and two, I'm enjoying this too much to make us go faster and get there sooner. So this is just right for me. I've got to go back to the BTC office and figure out why no one's getting my text, why I can't get a hotspot to work, blah, blah, blah. So I know where to get water, I can get diesel, I've got some groceries to get. So back to Marsh we go, unfortunately. Nice, nice. And this is Marsh Harbor. And this is Muriel with an original tune. I've been getting some requests to show you Velzo's garden, so I thought I would record it out here in my garden, in which I actually have some love in a mist, the seeds of which came from Velzo's garden uh, in Santa Cruz, California. And Velzo Brown is a wonderful uh, inspiration for many of us. She uh, still playing jazz piano and uh, even hosted her own band for her 100th birthday. So uh, amazing lady. And uh, I wrote this for her. Uh, I'll, t I'll play it first, then I'll tell you the story, how this came about. So this is Velzo's Garden. <laughs>
So the story about the song is uh, when I went to visit Felzo at her little cottage in Santa Cruz, California, she had a beautiful flower garden all around. And I really missed my garden at home. I'd been touring for a long time and uh, asked if I could weed her garden. That would just make me really feel at home. And she was delighted with the idea. And afterwards, she told me that she was going to put up a sign, Muriel weeded here. And uh, uh, I then uh, went home and, and uh, wrote this song for her to try to capture the, uh, the feel of her garden and the, the gentle simplicity, the simple life there. And uh, that's how the song came about.